I should get to work? Is that what you're telling me? If you're busy. We're gonna have a problem between you and I. His body camera's on. His body camera's on. Stop. He has his body camera on. I'm gonna tell you what right now, dude. I'm not the one. You want to stand there and hold your cell phone in my face. Cell phones can be altered and modified to be used as tasers or a firearm. Fictional crap, in my opinion. You have no business here. I do have business here. Stop acting like a, like a, like a savage. Do these investigations usually take five months? This investigation is starting to feel like a cover-up. For Sergeant Fahey's action. Hey, what's up, guys? Long Island Audit here, back again with another video. Today, we're at the Connecticut State Police Internal Affairs Headquarters here in Meriden, Connecticut. We are here today, as always, to peacefully exercise our First Amendment right to film in public and publicly accessible areas, to promote transparency and accountability within our government, to ensure that our public servants recognize our rights and treat us with respect. Specifically, we are here to follow up on the internal affairs investigation into Sergeant Brian Fahey for assaulting me and violating my constitutional rights. It's been five long months and I haven't heard anything. No one has reached out to me. So we are here to follow up and ask what's going on. It's looking like another cover up to me. Let's get into it. It always makes me laugh when I see this sign, professional standards. Sergeant Brian Fahey has zero professional standards. Hi, how are you, ma'am? Hi, I was looking to see if I could speak to an investigator from Professional Standards. Hold on one second, please. All right, no problem. Mr. Ritz. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? I don't know if you remember, we talked last time. Yes, we did. D'Angelo. You took my you uh, go complaint. you want to out of the cold? You yes, I would appreciate we that. We can't record inside. That's the only thing. So if you want to record, we'll have to stay outside. Okay, so we're going to have to stay outside then. Okay. okay. Why no is problem. it that you can't record inside? It's an agency policy. Agency policy? Isn't there a right to record act here in Connecticut where you yeah, have the right to record about, law we're enforcement? Not to you, but we're not going to get into semantics. Well, no, it just it is cold out here, and I would appreciate if we can go inside. I've recorded inside of yeah, it's not the lobby. Sorry, it's posted and whatnot, so if you I've recorded record, inside that lobby before. Okay, I can't yeah. anymore right now. So what can we do for you today, though? Okay, um, your name again, officer? Sergeant D'Angelo. Sergeant. Sergeant and Sergeant Cormier. Cormier. Okay, um, so I'm here, drove three hours to get here to follow up on the internal affairs investigation okay. uh, into Sergeant Brian Fahey. Yep. Um, you took my complaint. Yep. So it's still active? Yeah, the investigator is still working on it. Lieutenant Benoit, his name is. Lieutenant Benoit. Benoit. Yep. Lieutenant Benoit. So it's been almost five months now since I've submitted my complaint. Yep. And I haven't heard anything from Lieutenant Benoit or anyone. Sergeant Brian Fahey has been answering people on email saying that he's getting promoted in January and people have been forwarding that email to me from his official um, uh, state police uh, email address. And he's telling people, you know, you're going to be, you know, I'm being promoted in January. And, you know, five months for a five minute interaction that it's all on video, security camera. I'm sure you have that because I have it. Security camera video, uh, body camera, my video until he shut it off. Sure. Um, which was unfortunate. But again, I, I just don't understand. Do, do these investigations, especially some for something that took a total of minutes, usually take five months? And do you have like an expected time frame on when the investigation will be concluded? They could take longer. Um, I don't, but I could have the investigator that's working on it because he's actively, you know, reviewing videos, like you said, and conducting interviews and whatnot. But it's a five minute video, Sergeant. Yeah, but there's interviews and stuff like that. And there's other things that may be going on that you may not, you know, necessarily be aware of too. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Shouldn't I be aware of it though? Should as a complainant in? Oh, well, I'm saying I'm speaking hypothetically. Oh, okay. I'm saying, I'm saying hypothetically, maybe there's something going on, you know, uh, that's maybe not as apparent as, you know, you might think at face value. Well, I, I just at face value, I just I, we know it's a you know, a few minute interaction. We know that there's video from all angles of what happened that day. So you know, the first time I had this pro problem with Sergeant Fahey, it was investigated. I don't believe it took this long for the investigation. It was a much longer interaction, yeah. um, and they absolved him of any wrongdoing whatsoever. Um, you know, I would actually prefer that because at least I can, you know, at least it's done and over with. If, if you're going to make excuses for him, just make them already and not drag this on for five months is a long time. Right. And, and from not hearing from the lieutenant that's investigating it, Benoit, not hearing from him at all, like just a common courtesy, you know, a professional standard of just saying, hey, Mr. Reyes, I'm looking into your complaint. I haven't, he hasn't reached out to me. So for five months, he's been investigating a complaint and he hasn't reached out to the complaint tint in five months, but 
to give any updates. Mr. Reyes, you have all my contact information. I gave that when I submitted the complaint. I remember, I remember. Yeah. So, Mr. Reyes, hey, I'm just giving you a ring. Mr. Reyes, I'm sending an email. Mr. Reyes, you know, the, um, I'm looking into it. And, you know, it's starting to see, seem like a cover-up. This investigation, not a this invest, well, the first one was a cover-up, Sergeant. So this investigation is starting to feel like a cover-up mm -hmm. for Sergeant Fahey's actions. The first one was, and, and police departments across the country have condemned the investigation into him the first time. So sure. it's not just me who I'm sure gets portrayed as anti-police when I'm not. But again, I, I just don't understand why five months I've talked to other internal affairs departments, yeah. internal affairs departments that I've worked with, leaders of internal affairs that I've worked with throughout the entire country, mm -hmm. and none of them seem to have the same thought process as why would a few minute interaction that's recorded in all kinds of different ways, there was only myself, Sergeant Fahey, and another officer, Trooper Kioi, was involved in the situation, so it's not like there's multiple witnesses that need to be talked to. I, I just don't understand. Is, is Can you shed any light on why an internal affairs investigation, is this how all internal affairs investigation, are you guys overloaded with internal affairs investigations because of bad behavior by Connecticut State Police? No, there, there are a lot of investigations. Um, you know, as you can imagine, some prove to be sustained, some are not sustained, some are exonerated, so on and so forth. So it varies. Right. Some behavior, you know, uh, and, and policy violations are determined to have occurred. A lot of times they're determined not to have occurred. Specifically about this one, I, Sean, I can't tell you because I don't know. I didn't investigate it. Right. I can have the investigator contact. He's not here today. Right. Well, 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 last time you told yeah. me, the last time I was here. So this is the this is now the third time I've been here. You and I met the first time. I right. Remember. We met the first time where you took my complaint yes. with a female investigator, right. and I came back again to follow up. Again, I'm not coming back, and I'm not trying to harass you guys or anything like that. That's not my intent. I'm not coming back here every day or every week. This has been five that, months I don't now. Have that of you. We okay, have, uh, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and as far as I'm yeah, and, and I agree. And and you know, I, I'm not trying to come back here every week, every day, or even every month. You know, I've been in the last five months. I've been here three times. So that's you know, every other month, I drive three hours from Long Island, New York, just to try and get an update because no one's reached out to me. Yeah. I've sent emails to the uh, general internal affairs. Do you have contact information, or would I have to FOIA, FOIA request it for the investigator? So, because I have, you know, okay, yeah. I don't, I don't have, you know, much confidence that I'm going to be reached out to. Because the last time I was here, and in all fairness, Sergeant, you were not here last time I was here, yeah, but I was, I was here. but I was told before the last time I was here a couple months ago sure. that the investigating uh, lieutenant would be reaching out to me never reached out to me there was no communication whatsoever yeah. and i think that you know for the connecticut state police as a whole to to you know drag their feet and again you're not investigating it sergeant nothing personal towards you but for the no, connecticut state police professional standards to what it, what it would appear like dragging their feet in this investigation and then you have sergeant brian fahey you know answering because i'm sure people email sergeant brian fahey all the time in regards to this because his, his behavior was abhorrent you know, his behavior, Sergeant Brian Faye's behavior was criminal. And, you know, people reach out to him and then they send me his responses and he thinks this whole thing is funny. That's that's the vibe that I'm getting. So, I mean, I would love to forward you those emails too. Just maybe that might help. I don't know. I kind of don't want to because I feel like it might delay the investigation even more because five months for, you know, a few minutes of worth of videos, you know, it might extend another month for yeah, a few I mean, sentences yeah, of email. It's valuable. I encourage you to send it. Right. Yeah. I'm just concerned that, you know, Sergeant by face telling people that he's being promoted in January. And I think that would be an absolute travesty. He's already a supervisor. Yeah. He's already working as a supervisor in, in, in the headquarters and for handing out pistol permits, if you can believe it. But, you know, it's just very concerning to me that this man might be promoted. Are they waiting for the promotion to come? And there's just a lot of questions And as a journalist and as an activist, you know, asking questions and just trying to figure out what's going on here. And, and for five months this is happening, yeah. it just seems a little excessive. And like like I said, it seems like you're dragging your feet so that there's some sort of cover up here or some type of... Because there was, whether you, you know, you can have your opinion on the first investigation or not, I'm not asking you for your opinion, but, you know, law enforcement, myself and people around the country and, and around the world, frankly, have determined that that investigation was a farce and a cover up. So, you know, I, you know he pushed me back because he thought I was going to fall or whatever the case may be. You know, it, it is what, you know, he slapped my phone because he thought it was a taser. And I just want to make it clear right now. My phone right now is not a taser or a weapon in any single way. So, please. Okay. And uh, real quick. I sure. To cut you off, but the first one I'm not familiar with. You mentioned it to me last time we spoke, so that's kind of the only familiarity I have with it. Um, 
and not to get into too deep detail, but I know if someone's under investigation, as this individual was, they can't be promoted while they're under investigation. So I'm not sure you mentioned a cover up. I don't. It's not like right. we're waiting. Someone's waiting for. for well, that's what he's before. saying from his official email address. Well, Sergeant Brian Faye is saying that he's going to be promoted. You can't be promoted while you're under investigation. Okay. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab the lieutenant's card. If All right. One. If not, I'll get you the. Um, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Sergeant. Thank you. How are we, sir? Good. How are you? Good. I was, so, the, so, I was the sergeant you talked to last time. Uh, oh, I okay. Was, last time I was my here. My personal business card. Trust me. And the, wait, 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 one sec, okay? Gotcha. Uh, sorry, Joyce. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry. And I'm sorry, I forgot your name already. Sergeant Kyle Corbin. Sergeant. Um, so, Sergeant um, Corbin, is, is Corbin. the no. Is the I'm sorry. Is the uh, no filming policy inside of? Because I did catch a glimpse of the sign when the uh, receptionist opened the door. Yep. So is the no no filming policy a new policy? Do you know when that was enacted? I don't know the exact date. I came here in March, so I don't know the exact date. It was here when you were here in March, yeah. though. Okay, because I remember the first time I dealt with Sergeant Brian Fee. I've unfortunately been to this beautiful building <laughs> many many, many times. Here, right. I mean, they would be if the if the uh, if the windows weren't all punched out, but. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, I remember when I came here the first time for the first incident where Sergeant Bra- Brian Fahey assaulted me and broke my phone and violated my constitutional rights that I was able to record. That's like a lobby area right in front of us here. Yes, it is. That's a lobby area. So now there's just no recording. But you would be able to record, right? Yeah, it's more. Of, it's less of a lobby area. It's more of a waiting area. A waiting area. Yeah. That's Because that's where they took my interview okay. with the first time yeah. for the first incident. So, you know, I, I just... Is there? Do you know the reason behind that policy, or? I, like I said, I don't know the, the exact. I just I'm asking you because you're a supervisor. You're 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 in a supervisor role, so I just I didn't know if you knew the the, the reason behind the no filming policy. I, I can't I can't speak on the matter. I, I'm not sure why the policy changed. Okay. I just know that it did. All right. So it changed sometime between the first incident and this incident. I mean, I guess that's fine. You know, you guys came out to speak to me at least. So, Absolutely. you know, I just <laughs> and I do appreciate that. It just. You know, it's in your experience, how long have you worked for professional standards, if you don't mind me asking? Since March. Since March. And in, in your experience, do investigation, how, what's the typical length of an investigation? Yeah, so I, we, we talked about this last time. It's difficult for me to speak on generalities. Um, it all depends on the investigation, how thorough it is, how thorough it needs to be. And um, if it needs to be many days, very short, it really, it's, I can't really speak on it. Okay. You know, but it, there are general. some, there are, it, it, but there are some, you can attest to the fact that there are some that would take days or weeks yes if, if, if they're very short investigations there's you know video and uh there's no interviews that need to be conducted right like that. okay um but if we need to speak to multiple people it does take time they have schedules we have to work around and things like that. have you seen any of the are you are you part of this investigation at all or is it just one man investigating it uh so it's just one it's one individual he's a lieutenant he's in charge of the investigation and he works for professional standards correct okay yeah. is he here he's not he's not here no. I believe uh, Sergeant D'Angelo already stated that he's going to go inside and get his business card for you. Okay. As being close to the holidays, people do have like prior engagements. So. Right, vacations. I get that. Yeah. I understand. I understand. So, yeah, I just, I, I would love to speak to the lieutenant. It's been five months. I haven't been able to speak to it. He's been investigating it this entire time? Nope. Uh, it changed hands uh, a couple times because people transferring in and out. Oh, okay. So, gotcha. Last time I told you it was uh, Lieutenant Tachel that was in charge of the investigation. He's right. been transferred out of the unit. And uh, Lieutenant Benoit has been transferred into the unit. Okay. He's reassigned the investigation. Gotcha. Yeah, so I, just, I would love to speak to him because, you know, you every time I talk to you, I'm putting you on the spot here asking a bunch of questions, and it's like you don't know or you can't comment on anything because you're not investigating, you know, because, you know, it's not like this is – I'm not some third party. This is my complaint that I filed, so I think I should be, you know, you know, you kept in the loop. Yeah, is there anything else that needs to be added to the original complaint that you have uh, first put in? No, I think, I, think we, uh, I was very thorough in my complaint, and you guys did a great job taking the complaint, and – um you know that you guys have the body camera footage. The you have my footage from YouTube. You have um, you know the security we, camera footage. I believe last time we spoke, we mentioned the state's attorney's office. Did you have any headway with that? So I tried to submit something to the state's attorney's office. I have not heard back. Okay. I did. I did go to the state's attorney's office though, and um, here in um, where is it? Middleton. Middletown. Middletown. Yep. Middletown. So I did go to the state's attorney's office in Middletown and. Uh, didn't really get anywhere i submitted it i handed it to them and uh haven't heard back from them either you know just i'm a big believer in, in transparency and accountability and i feel like that's lacking right now that's you know if i'm promoting transparency and accountability and no one's reaching out to me there's no transparency in this investigation whatsoever you know hey no updates no nothing 
and there's no accountability from the first investigation, you know, I just believe that, you know, I, I don't, I'm not one that believes that law enforcement in general are, you know, horrible people. Uh, I, I, I have friends that are in law enforcement. I work with law enforcement. I do trainings, uh, collaborations with different departments, and I'm proud of that, you know, to help bridge the gap. But, you know, when, when someone like Sergeant Brian Fahey, who is clearly unhinged, Sergeant Brian Fahey is clearly an unhinged individual who cannot control his emotions. And there's, that's probably the reason why he's working behind a desk in headquarters, but to keep him off the streets. But, you know, there needs to be some accountability because then how are we going to ever get any progress in, you know, police reform? And he needs to set a standard for your office is called professional standards. And his actions, both incidents were not professional whatsoever, you know thinking my my camera was a taser i think we spoke about this last time you know you, you didn't think my camera you don't think my camera is a taser in any way and or a weapon um you're not putting your hands on me because you think i'm gonna fall backwards or something like that you're not kicking me off public property you know and i appreciate that i do i really do because i don't ever want to get assaulted or my rights violated again unfortunately it happens way too much but you know in order for the public to gain trust back into law enforcement there needs to be accountability and for law enforcement when you arrest people right you probably you've probably been on a trooper for a while when you arrest people you know it's to hold people accountable and to send a message to other people that if you break the law and if you act this way you're going to be held accountable right that's the whole point right of law enforcement is when you arrest someone to send a message not only to to punish the individual for breaking the law and to deter, deter him from doing him or her to do it again, it's also to send a message to other people about not breaking the law, right? Right. right. So I think the same thing should apply within Connecticut State Police. That's all. That's my point of view on it. And um, you know, I just I hope I hope we can get some updates here and this can be resolved quickly as possible. You know, five months is a very long time for a few minute interaction. But you can appreciate that um, a thorough investigation. Oh, of course, of course, of course, of course. I, I would, I very much would appreciate a thorough investigation. And they did do a thorough investigation last time. There was many, many papers into that in the IA complaint, uh, Sergeant Brian Fay's statement, other officers' statements, and. Um, you know, there is federal lawsuit coming against Sergeant Brian Fahey. So whatever this determination is, I, the, me filing a complaint is not me expecting anything out of the ordinary. But it's just I have to document the process and follow the process Absolutely. just for anybody else. It's Absolutely. the process, that's right? Well your right yeah, it's that. the yeah, process. That's, that's, that's never that's your question. contact info, right? Yes, that's correct. So here's my concern. I know you're not going to like this answer. Obviously, I know you're a journalist. I know you're going to post it, whatever. I don't want to give you the lieutenant's email address because you and your viewers or whatever are going to be inundating his email box so i don't feel comfortable doing that i'm just going to be straight with you so i'm going to have him reach out to you okay but can he can he reach out to me though can he actually do that yeah, so we'll make sure that happens okay right. that's fine i, I mean be, i just want to be at the end of the day i'll just go to the the connecticut state headquarters and, and get his email address anyway if you want to that's fine but i'm right. not going to be the one responsible for doing it because like i said i understand your forum and you have a lot of viewers which God bless you and God bless them, but I'm not going to be responsible. Right, but you 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 would agree that his email address is public record for anybody to know. Sure. Okay. Anything else we can help you? With? No, that's it. I, I'm going to get a hold of him. I'm going to get his. I'm going to go to the headquarters and do a FOIA request and get his email address, and I'll send him the the emails that Sergeant Brian Fahey is uh, apparently sending Please to do. people. I'll have him reach out to you, so he'll probably get a hold of you prior to you. Okay, great. That, but go for it. Yeah. All right. Feel Thanks, Sergeant. Email address I provided you before. Okay. Thanks, Sergeant. Right. Yeah, you gave me your email address last time. Did yeah. you get Did you get inundated with emails? Okay, so, all right, guys, take care. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to be heading over to the Connecticut State Police headquarters. Hopefully, we don't run into Sergeant Brian Fahey. It wouldn't have been necessary if he would have just gave me the investigator, Lieutenant Benoit's email address, but they're refusing to do so. It's public record. I need to get a hold of him. It's been five months. Let's head over to the Connecticut State Police headquarters. We are just arriving at the Connecticut State Police headquarters here to file our FOIA request. This place always brings back horrific memories for me. I was assaulted twice, my constitutional rights violated twice, and my camera shut off twice, all by Sergeant Brian Fahey. He and officers like him is why we developed Attorney Shield, because Attorney Shield would have prevented him from shutting off my camera. All the footage is protected by a pin, and it cannot be shut down without entering that secure pin. The footage is then uploaded to a secure cloud server, it would have been completely different, not to mention an attorney would have been witnessing 
his egregious behavior that day. This is why I am extremely excited about Attorney Shield. It is a game changer. It is going to fundamentally change policing across our great country. If you'd like to learn more or sign up during our early sign up event, you could do so by visiting the links in the description and pinned comment. Let's go inside and do this FOIA request. Hey, what are you here for today? Hi, sir. How are you? Hey. I just like to submit a FOIA request. A FOIA request? They're all uh, done online. Oh, I, I do mine in person as as per statute. I don't follow it online just because for accountability purposes. So you want to speak with legal then? Yeah. Okay. I'll be right back with you. All right. Thank you. Uh, sir. Yes. They said uh, that you could email them. They aren't uh, here today. They're not here today, but don't you file records requests with I'm not sure. With I records? Honestly, yeah, it, I'm not sure. Last records, time I was here, there was a window. Can so I speak to records? Records, is, uh, they're open Tuesday and Thursday, 9 to 2. You can come and speak to them between those hours. Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday, 9 to 2? Tuesday, Thursday, 9 to 2. Yep, and here's, uh, here's the email. Okay, no yep. problem. So nobody's here from legal whatsoever? No, okay, sorry. all right, no problem. Yeah, sorry about Tuesday, that. Thursday. No problem, sir. Can I just get your name badge number? Yeah, Trooper Sullivan, 679. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Have a Thank great day, okay? You. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a good one. You have a happy Thanksgiving as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, they did not want to let us in to file our FOIA request. I guess the clerk only has a part-time job here, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We will be back when they are open so we can submit our FOIA request. I will also be trying to reach out to legal via email. I normally like to submit my FOIA request in person just to document that process for each and every one of you and for transparency and accountability purposes. But obviously they're not wanting to let us in today so it's pretty much on par for the Connecticut State Police. Internal Affairs earlier, they were very cordial as always and professional, but they're dragging their feet. This is definitely a cover up. It was a cover up the first time. It's a cover up this time. Sergeant Brian Fahey is telling people from his official government email address that he is being promoted. That would be an outrage. Absolutely disgusting. He needs to be held accountable for his egregious actions here. Let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. Stay tuned for updates. This is not over. We will follow up. We will try our best and do everything in our power to get some accountability here. As always, stay safe. God bless. I'll see you in the next video. Long Island audit. Peace.